Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to Decidedly Vanilla Season 5. This is episode 6 and as you can see we are not starting this episode on the shores of the island of Enoki. Instead we have come out probably about a thousand blocks or so west to the land of Calamari, <laughs> I guess. This right here is something I've been working on on live streams. This is a squid farm, or it's going to be a squid farm. Anyway, as you can see right now, kind of devoid of squids, although occasionally they'll spawn in here and I have managed to pick myself up a little bit of ink while I've been doing this, but this is a massive project right here. I'm drying out basically an entire river biome except for a small chunk here. I might even not stick with this as the current shape is because it's kind of an awkward shape, but in 1.13.1, which is currently in snapshots at the moment as this has been well documented at this point, Squids are no longer going to be able to spawn in any old pocket of water. There are a few other pockets of water around here which I have not yet cleared up. I think there is one up here in the hills, which I might actually clear up now anyway, just because if uh, this is going to work in 1.13, we're not exactly sure when 1.13.1 is going to arrive. It's There it is over there. It's still going to be a decent squid farm if we can get rid of the other water sources in this area. I think actually this one is probably at too high of an elevation for squid to spawn, but I don't know. I'm just in the process of drying out all of the water in the area, so I may as well. And... This has been a very laggy process <laughs> because it turns out water updates are one of the things that has not been super well optimized in 1.13 and hopefully 1.13.1 fixes that, for goodness sake, fix that. But uh, yeah, as it stands right now, I've been creating a lot of laggy updates by sp spamming all of these sponges everywhere and hopefully that hasn't been too bad on my server mates while I've been doing it. But with squids only able to spawn in rivers and oceans during 1.13.1 and beyond, it means that a river biome, basically any river biome, is now the best place to spawn squids because you don't have to worry about doing a perimeter of ocean around the place where you want to build your squid farm. Squids can only spawn be below sea level and un until about Y46 or something like that before they, uh, they, they drop out of their spawning range. So it's important to have something basically at sea level, and this is at Y63 right here, so it's pretty much perfect. I just have to block off a couple of water blocks here, and the only other thing that's going to spawn in here potentially is salmon or drowned, but I don't think we're going to get any drowned in here once I've given it the squid farm treatment, and hopefully, according to some methodologies that have been provided by people on the SciCraft server, Il Mango put out a really good video about this, we can potentially block salmon spawning as well, meaning we can convert this river biome into a squid farm. Now, you're, more, you're probably wondering why there's all this sand and stuff around the place, and that is because technically all of this, like this section here up until this little area of land. There was like a pond here as well. It was all riverbank. And you're wondering why that isn't included in the river biome is because according to the debug screen, it's not even in the river biome. The actual river is actually a fairly small section in the middle here. And I've been outlining, this is why the horrible shape of this birch kind of pool that I've made exists. I've been outlining exactly where the boundary of the biomes is on either side of the actual river. Like I step into the water here and it changes to river biome. I step out on the other side and anything on these blocks is either birch forest or tiger mountains. And it leaves you with a very small section of river to work with, to be perfectly honest. Like there are sections over here where the river doesn't get more than about two blocks wide. I mean, there's a section here that I've just walled off because it had to end somewhere. And if we dry out the rest of the river biome in both directions, about as far as the render distance or the loading distance for a player will allow, which is about 10 or maybe 12 chunks on a server, it's going to mean that no squid will be able to spawn in either direction along the river because it's all going to be dried out. There's no, going to be no spawnable space for them. So this area is going to become, hopefully, a very efficient squid farm if I can get it to work right. Now, I am going to be testing a couple of designs out here. I think the best way to do this is supposed to be with waterlogged blocks. But as I have said previously in this season, I'm not going to go with like the most efficient farm design if there's something that works kind of just as well, but also makes things look pretty because I, <laughs> I think this looks really ugly right now. And obviously, this is not the intent look for a squid farm and the way they've designed squid farms actually looks really interesting with the kind of waterlogged stairs and stuff but I haven't actually been able to successfully road test that myself because I'm not as technically minded as those guys and I'm not confident that I'm building everything right so it's going to take a little bit of trial and error but what we will have here is a squid farm that will hopefully serve us for the rest of this season of DV. 
And I need a fair amount of ink because we're going to be working with a lot of dark prismarine. I want to make a decent supply of black concrete and other materials. We're also probably going to need things like written books at various points throughout the season. It's going to be really useful. So I thought I would start out on that project today and update you on the progress of it before it goes any further. I have a ton of sponges in my inventory, some of which I rescued myself from an ocean monument, others of which I've borrowed from various people on the server who have ocean monument bases, folks like Awuga, who were very kind enough to lend me their sponges for this project in exchange for a little bit of ink, and I think he's going to be happy for some ink as well, because he's working with a fair amount of dark prismarine himself. But all I've been doing is sectioning off bits of the river, like so with the, the birch planks. I just harvested a ton of birch from this forest around here, and I've gotten about as far as this. Right there is my latest dam, and all I'm doing is just damming off the river in kind of smallish sections, sections no longer than maybe about eight blocks wide or so, something within the effective range of a sponge or a couple of sponges to clear out of water. And it's, it's taking a little while just because of how big the river biome is, but it is going to be much easier to do it this way than to do it in an ocean unless you're one of those folks who can build a redstone slime block contraption that clears out an entire ocean biome of water, which I do not have the technical know-how or the sheer amount of sand right now to do myself. So I figured we would do this in a river biome. This is not too far away from my base. I'm going to establish a nether portal connection here at some point, and we're not going to farm it for XP or anything. We're just going to have a drop-based squid farm here, and I think, hopefully, fingers crossed, this will do the job and we'll be able to harvest lots of awesome ink from it and get ourselves lots of lovely, lovely blocks. But I'm going to leave that for now because this is not easy this is uh, this is not easy work and it is not particularly fun work to watch on camera and those of you guys who were following me on the live stream the other day will probably know that we spent a fair amount of time just chatting with people in the chat because there wasn't a huge amount to talk about in terms of the stuff that we're doing here so i'm probably going to head back to enoki work on a couple of other projects and i'll see you guys back over there here we are back on the island and you may notice I have let the bear out of his boat because today we're finally going to name him. I have like 13 name tags from fishing, not to mention probably a couple here and there from other places, other like dungeons and things like that. And if I had an anvil around here, I would be renaming this name tag right now, but I think I'll have to head down to my uh, spawner area because that's the only place I've got an anvil right now. Also the only place I have an ender chest because when I was looking for the sponges that I've been using to dry out that riverbed, I ended up leaving my ender chest in an ocean monument. So we're going to go and make another one at some point. I just need to grab the obsidian for that. And that means finding lava and all the other complicated stuff that goes along with that. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. Instead, I'm going to grab this anvil and we're going to name him. And this is uh, a name that was actually suggested by Zloy XP, who I'm not certain we should be bearing all that much goodwill for, if you pardon the unintentional pun there. We, uh, we, we've been pranked by Zloy, but I feel like he probably came up with my favorite name out of the lot. So this guy is going to be called Umberto. <laughs> and I really like that. I think that's that's pretty funny. So we're going to head back up here, name the bear, and then we're going to make take some steps to preserve the bear's safety here on this island because Umberto is our friend. We want Umberto to hang out here. And one of the things I do not want is for him to walk into my cactus farm and die. <laughs> my cactus farm is very much an open air endeavor right now. And so instead of fencing Umberto off, I think what I'm going to do is re- place the cactus farm, or to, to, to repot it somewhere else, I suppose, because yeah, he has a tendency to wander. He seems to have a bit of wanderlust in him. He is a traveling bear. There you go, buddy. Umberto! Oh, what a legend. He, he's so cool. All right, let me, um, let me put down a boat somewhere just in case he wants to hop back into that, but I'm going to have it there instead of being on the, uh, on the water because I don't really want him to start rowing off to other islands. He might go and visit Wee Beastie's base occasionally or something like that. But obviously, with a free-roaming bear on the island, we don't want him wandering into the cactus farm and then taking damage, ending up like prickling himself to death or anything like that. So we're going to take the cactus farm down and we are going to replace it. We are going to repot it. We're going to transport it somewhere else. And I don't know exactly where yet, but I'm going to pick a spot on this island that I think would be good for a cactus farm. And once again, we are going to build something kind of large like the sugarcane farm, which yes, I've finally gotten around to adding a couple of extra floors to. It is almost complete. It just needs a couple more finishing touches to the, the roof section up there. And I think that is probably about as high as it's going to get. One more story on there and we'll be done with that build. But I'm really happy with it so far. And I want to make a skyscraper type of thing for the cactus to go in. 
And I don't know if it's necessarily going to be like a bright green sort of pillar or something because the tendency for these things is always to theme whatever the build is around whatever it's producing and this does not look like sugarcane in any way shape or form this is <laughs> this is all very kind of i don't know it's it's sort of an, a chinese style themed thing in terms of the color choices and the materials i'm using anyway it doesn't really imitate sugarcane in any way so i don't really want the the cactus farm to be like a giant cactus or anything like that and i hear you guys saying bombo in the comments that is not happening <laughs> i'm not doing anything like that i am i'm gonna make myself a skyscraper to farm cactus think uh, think more good times with scar than iscal 85 and then hopefully we'll be along the right track so yeah we're gonna build a skyscraper somewhere around here we're going to fill it full of cactus and have ourselves an automatic cactus farm as well and this this farm right here has not been doing too badly for us we have a, <laughs> only a little bit of stuff in there right now but i have been clearing it out somewhat regularly i've been smelting the cactus in my little smelting area downstairs and this was not a particularly big cactus farm to begin with so i think it's it's really going to go quite well if we stick with the same design uh, probably just make sure the cacti is spaced out a little bit, layer it up a couple of times, and it should be should be real good. And I've got to say, I'm about to appoint Umberto here, the civic planner for the island of Inoki, because he has chosen a pretty good spot. I think this right here would be a good place for the cactus farm. It's a little bit further away from our build, but that gives us a little bit more room to tie everything together with the paths and stuff. If I sound a little bit distracted during this section of the video, by the way, it's because the heavens have freaking opened here in the UK. There is a ton of rain right now. It is absurd. I can barely see about six feet out of my window up here on the first floor of my house, so I'm, I'm occasionally just turning around and gaping at how ridiculous the rain is right now, so I'm sorry if I seem a little bit kind of distracted and I'm muddling my words every now and again. It's just a little crazy right now. I've not seen this amount of rain for a long time. We had a really big dry spell here in the UK, and then there was an absolute ton of rain all of a sudden. So I'm thinking we're going to use bricks for this build. <laughs> I don't know, like the, the aesthetic of like bricks and sand and then cactus, which I'm not going to place a cactus because again, Umberto seems to be wandering a little bit, but I think those two go really well together, especially with the bright green grass we've got here on Anoki. I think this will be an excellent start. So I'm going to gather myself a ton of bricks, which thankfully I brought a bunch back from the area around the squid farm. So we should have a decent amount to get on with. That is nowhere near enough because bricks always condense down into fewer blocks than you think. But I think that will probably be a good start. We've got at least two and a half stacks. The whole thing is not going to be just made out of brick. That's going to be more of a, I guess, an accent kind of thing in the same way that the dark prismarine is over there. And in a way, I think it's probably a good thing if we're building this out of brick that we put it <laughs> a decent distance away from the dark prismarine because, I don't know, the contrasts there would be a little bit much. But okay, we've got that. We can probably do... You know what? I'm thinking maybe bricks and stripped birch might be a good combo. Let's try that out. These just... Yeah. There's something about bricks next to this kind of pale yellow kind of thing, like the sand. Let's put together a little bit of a build palette here, shall we? The birch is almost looking a little bit dingy that way round because, because of the shadow that's always cast on things. Because whenever you have east-west facing blocks, they tend to be a little bit darker than the north and south faces, which is really weird, actually, because Minecraft, the sun sets in the uh, sets in the west, rises in the east, you know? So, yeah, I think, I think maybe if we can manage to get everything so that the north and south faces of the blocks are, like, that, that'll, that'll look a little bit better, maybe. I don't know. It's not terrible. I kind of like that. As designs go, <laughs> this is very unconventional. But I'm wondering maybe if we repeat this on the other side, if this could be like a kind of almost look, looks like a sliding door sort of thing. Like the pistons in Minecraft kind of imply there's something mechanical going on, even if there isn't actually any redstone behind any of them. And maybe in the long run, we could automate this and make it a garage door that closes somehow. But that would be a little bit tricky, a little bit beyond my, my redstone know-how right now. But maybe there's something to this. So what if we count kind of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Eight. It's going to be an even numbered kind of space here anyway, and then maybe put this like so up here. Uh, this mushroom is definitely going to be in the way. Let's get rid of that. Move this out of the way. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking for stuff that's a little bit unconventional here. Builds that are off the beaten track, the kind of stuff that you wouldn't normally expect to be paired together, like bricks and pistons. <laughs> this is this is kind of neat, but like one of the key things to building in Minecraft is establishing a pattern, because even if you've got some stuff that doesn't really go together, if you pattern it well and you give it this kind of sense of depth 
and like it's intentional like if you make everything patterned then it looks like it's meant to be there in a way so yeah give me a couple more seconds i'll put something together with this and we'll see how we get on. You know, I think there could be something to this. It's lo It looks really weird. I will give you that. The people in the comments now, I'm sure, are going, that looks odd. And you're right. But does it look bad? I don't think so. I like, I, I just, something about this appeals to me and I can't quite put my finger on what it is. I think it's the color combos. I think the brick, then the, the strip birch, and then the piston texture. Oh, I don't know. There's just something about it that looks really good to me. Uh, okay, so I left a little bit of space around the outside and, and even just there, just looking at those colors, don't they look striking? Doesn't some of that look really striking to you? I don't know. And I, I think the, the color we're working with with the, the birch texture, like it doesn't look too bad when it's placed like this because then you still get the really bright end textures of the logs there. Mm. Yeah, so this is going to be our little kind of, I guess, cactus warehouse sort of thing at the bottom here. And I'm not sure if we're gonna, we, maybe we'll, we'll push it up, maybe we'll push it down, because there's not a great deal of stuff underneath here. The main reason I didn't wanna build anything over here is because my storage area is expanding out in all sorts of directions, and I still need to build something over the top of this. And obviously we have the skeleton spawn a little bit further down there as well. I didn't want something to, to be restricted by not being able to do much vertical movement. One of the things I wanna do with this island actually is get a real sense of vertical space because there's not a lot of actual land to work with. So, yeah, I kind of want to, I want to work with vertical stuff. I want to work with height and depth and stuff in my builds that I don't normally do. Normally, in Minecraft, generally, there is a tendency to spread out because it's easier, right? You don't have to do as much digging if you're just building stuff on the surface. But rather than do that, I think we'll work with a little bit of vertical space and see how we can get on with this. I don't know if this is going to be the footprint of the place, like if it's going to be like a, I don't want it to be another kind of, cubic thing like that i sort of want to make it more i guess modular in a way but i don't know quite how to do that i maybe bring it out a couple of blocks here and there and and kind of do squares on the corners or something like that i don't want it to just be like a straight square as a footprint or a rectangle as a footprint i want to do something different how are we going to do that though i don't know i might have to go to the drawing board on this one i might have to go to creative mode and test out a couple of things first but we'll We'll give it a try. We'll see what we can come up with here. Hmm. Looks too much like a fire station. Modern, but not exactly coherent. Kind of underdeveloped. Yep. I think we'll go with this one. Well, folks, one thing is for sure. I'm going to need a lot more bricks. <laughs> I've been gathering a few more supplies, but I think even this... Three and a bit stacks is really not going to be enough bricks. We are going to need to harvest a ton of clay. Oh boy, that's going to be a lot of fun. So we uh, we will need to go and gather a little bit more stuff. I think we can probably make a start on this today, though. Not that this isn't a good start, but you saw the scope of what we're trying to build here. This is going to be pretty epic. In fact, I may even move the entrance a little bit over to the left. Umberto thinks the same. He's looking over here being like, no, dude, start over here. But yeah, we, uh, we kind of need to do a bit of stuff. Hey, silence online, give him a wave. In the time that it's taken me to uh, build that little thing in creative, Optifine came out. So let me check something out right here. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I didn't want a yellow sky. Oh no. Oh, the water looks way different. <laughs> I forgot Lively Default had such like a clear watercolor that's kind of interesting i didn't think i was going to like it as much because they made so many changes to water recently but that's actually kind of cool mm, i don't know if i want to keep that or not the blue sky the blue sky is nice but yeah as i get back on land it turns yellow oh no oh i don't want to keep that i don't want to have a yellow sky here on my mushroom island Oh, that sucks. That kind of sucks. Right, I'm in the market for a new custom sky, guys. So if you feel like dropping some recommendations in the comments, that'd be really good. But I I can't work with this, man. I hate to say it, but I can't. I think we're going back to default. I think we're going back to regular old default. No clouds for me. No fancy real world clouds anyway. I could turn on Minecraft clouds, but who wants to do that, really? Yeah. Oh, well, that's a shame. Okay, <laughs> no worries. Back to Back to basics then, I guess.
we go that is it <laughs> i am out of bricks the build is not even like a quarter of the way done and i am out of bricks this is going to be way too big for a cactus farm by the way i realized when i finished drafting this in creative at least the facade of it the facade i <laughs> i ended up sorry weird dv in joke i had to i had to come to terms with the fact that this was going to be far too big for a cactus farm because realistically i'm not actually going to use cactus all that much i'm not going to use green dye like we you can get lime green from sea pickles now i'm not going to use green and cyan dye enough that i will need this entire building dedicated to a cactus farm so this is probably going to end up being a multi-floor operation because it has multiple floors, so I may as well use them. The first is going to be a cactus farm. Then there's probably going to be like pumpkin and melon farms, maybe a couple of crop farms, that kind of thing. Obviously, this thing doesn't have like a an actual door involved in it. So maybe we could even get some villages up in here and kind of do crop auto farms and stuff like that. Maybe. But I'm really happy with this so far. I love the facade. I think it looks really good so far. And when it's fleshed out into a an actual building with actual more bricks in it. Seriously, I have like two brick stairs left and the rest of it is up there by the sign. Oh, I got my first. You probably saw it in the time lapse because I was being creepy. I got my first phantom head because these guys keep coming at me because right now the one player sleeping thing is broken because we only just installed the, uh, the data packs from Hermitcraft. But yeah, I got myself my first mob head from one of these guys, which I'm very, very happy about. But yeah, these guys are going down nice and easy now that I've got my arrows in the time lapse. I did not have my arrows with me because I left all of my stuff in a chest. <laughs> So I ended up forgetting to bring the arrows with me, but getting some phantom membrane is nice and 
I totally meant to end the time lapse by taking a slow po uh, slow falling potion and falling off of the uh, off of the roof, but somehow I uh, I forgot to take it in the uh, in the rush to get everything done. Man, it's good to have shaders back again. <laughs> I gotta say, like I don't tend to use them that much for gameplay because they do slow my FPS down a little bit, but for time lapses, there's really not much better. And all that we need, all of, all us builders need left to be added to the game is the replay mod, and I think we will be very very happy when that day arrives but for now i think we're done with this here episode i've gotten a lot done and there's a lot still to do but i will probably end up gathering a little bit more clay for this on this weekend's stream and uh if, if you guys are watching this on sunday if i've managed to get the edit out to you guys on time then i should be streaming at some point today if not at my usual time of three bst then a little bit earlier so uh so keep an eye out for that one and make sure you follow me over on twitch that's gonna be it for today thank you guys so much for watching this episode of decidedly vanilla my name has been pixelris i am now i am now the phantom leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.